Hi, this is Patrick Anderson. And I'm Liv. And today we have a Mustang Mach-E standard range all-wheel drive and we have it for two days. So we're gonna do lots of testing. And we're starting here at the Lowry Wings Over the Rockies Air Museum. But we're gonna explore a lot around Denver, Colorado and you're invited to come along with us. Let's go. driven it for 30 seconds but it is smoother than I thought it was gonna be yeah so we just got the car we <laughs> drove over to Lowry Air Force Base the old Lowry Air Force Base outside the wings over the Rockies Museum and now we're just driving around getting sort of used to how this feels but initial impressions very smooth nice ride I'm getting used to the one pedal driving one pedal driving is so far I like it except uh, like getting it to a stop sign it's a bit touchy trying to figure out like how much I need to do to come to a complete stop. But so far, so good. Very nice ride, very comfortable. It drives very nice. I mean, as a passenger, this feels very smooth. Oh my Lauren. <laughs> I should have anchored stuff down. <laughs> I think the mic fell off, right? Oh no, I don't. I only have one mic. Oh, okay. That, I would say, is identical to the Tesla, that ooh, right? Uh, I think it's a, <laughs> slightly less, but then again, that was the performance Tesla. But it still, it has a kick, and it's way better than my car, because like my car, to do that, you have to like shift and yeah. get high RPM. And you're not in unbridled. No, it's and engaged. And you were on like a really short street. And feel free to hit the speed bumps like we did, and. The yeah, Tesla. we're in the same exact parking lot. So we test drove a Tesla Model Y <laughs> and hit these speed bumps. Sorry for the, the bumps, but this is the way we know. Oh my God. The brakes are touchy. Oh my God. Sorry, that was really touchy. That was me gently. Like in my car, it wouldn't even brake. That turn was way better than the Tesla. Do you remember that? I don't like, remember. I think because the steering wheel was smaller, right? The steering wheel in the Tesla is minuscule, which I don't like. No, oh God, sorry. I think you might like one pedal driving. I might, might give it a yeah. Try. I'm glad we turned it off so I could try normal driving. Um, so already, I definitely like the steering wheel. It's much bouncier than I thought it was going to be. And that, it's very responsive. Oh, sorry. Bouncier in which way? Like, what do you mean? Um, Not like my car and harsh. There's a car. You want yeah, to I know. Go. I'm letting them go. Um, hello. When I say bouncy, I mean um, going over the bumps and stuff. It's not harsh. It's not harsh at all. Yeah. Like, your car feels like you're driving on a steel plate. I mean, I know we technically are driving on a giant plate of battery, but it doesn't feel like it. And I know everyone says it's a boat, and when I got into it first, <laughs> I thought, oh my god, this is a boat as a passenger, but the more time we spent in it, the more comfortable I feel, and the fact that I could raise the seat up, because um, it made me feel like very low and kind of like heavy but the higher I am the more SUV I feel oh god that brake thing is gonna be interesting all right let's try this one pedal thing sorry okay let's <laughs> go to a stop and I'm gonna put it in park just okay. so and now it's one pedal drive I need to put it back off. I was trying really hard to be gentle with that braking and you can still use the brake but you see it's pulling you pretty quickly, the region. Yeah. That's very unnerving. And like for me, driving left-legged, having my foot on the accelerator is when it's the most uncomfortable, to be totally honest, because that's the most crossed. When my foot's on the brake is when I have a brake, and oftentimes I'm using the propulsion of the car to give me a brake on the brake and kind of 
guide the vehicle from there. So this is almost like I don't get a break. Like I can, I can imagine, well, however you would use co-pilot, right? Just yeah. for long trips, it would be. Well, we're going to try co-pilot a lot. So. Yeah. Yeah. Oops. See there, I adjust my foot because I start, it starts tilting. So I pulled my foot off the accelerator. That actually coasted a bit though. Did you see that? Mm-hmm. We're in whisper, so it'll, it's less harsh, I believe. Okay. Um, there, when we went over the bumps, my foot slid down. So now I've got to adjust it. You probably felt that. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Oh, that sound. Yeah. Now it's louder. Yeah. Now we're on the highway. Okay, so it's probably as quiet as it's gonna be. I could turn that off. So we just finished day one with our test Mach E. It was a standard range all wheel drive and we got it just about 1230, I believe it was. Went for a couple of short drives, uh, took some photos and pictures over at the Wings Over the Rockies Museum, and then came back, gave her mom a little short ride in the Mach-E, then went to an area called Rhino, which is the Riv River North Art District here in Denver. Took a lot of great photos of the Mach-E. And then this evening, we drove down to an industrial area, more of a business park area south of Denver, and basically sort of just gave it a, a nice easy test drive, getting used to the one pedal driving, which is sort of our first thing that we'll talk about, the difficulties of learning the Mach-E. Yeah, so going to that industrial area was definitely more for me. Patrick did a lot of the driving today, pretty much all the driving. I tried it out initially this morning and was a bit too nervous with the one pedal driving. So I did normal driving and I found the responsiveness of the brake quite intense. So then tonight we went and drove around the industrial area and I just practiced with one pedal and add my first impression, it definitely is challenging and it seems like it's gonna take me a while to get used to it. And I'm not sure if it's like left leg sort of thing uh, or perhaps it's challenging for everyone. Patrick definitely expressed having some difficulty too. Yeah, it wasn't the easiest of things to get used to. I did do the one pedal driving with the Model Y when we did the test drive of that. I'll put a link above and down below again for that if you missed it. Um, so it was a little bit of a learning curve and there were still times, you know, even toward the end of the night when I was driving around and that getting used to it and remembering not to just smash the brake every time you want to come to a stop or um, overestimating how quickly it'll stop you and then having to switch over to the brake. So it's just a little bit of a learning curve. I don't think it's that big of a deal. I think that, uh, you know, I was getting more comfortable with it and I was actually liking it a lot by the end of the day. So I'm looking forward to tomorrow taking it up in the mountains and on some curvy roads and seeing how how it works there i'm very excited to just continue to learn to one pedal driving i think it's i think it's a really fun um, one of the neat things is it has like a braking coach so as you're coming to a stop it'll tell you uh 95 of the energies re has been returned uh based on your braking or use of the regen so uh, a few times i got 100 percent regen so i was excited by that and it's it's pretty fun so i like that part I'm still a bit nervous about that and I think it's gonna be a challenge, but I'm committed to it because I think it could be beneficial for me in the long run. And I think that this is gonna be a way that we drive in the future. Another area that I was really pleased with was just overall the, the ride quality and handling. I tried the different modes, of course, unbridled and engaged and whisper. You could definitely tell like uh, the steering was a little bit tighter in unbridled, of course. Um, but overall, of course, the, hand, the, the actual ride quality is the same in all three. Um, I thought it felt sporty in all three, felt very good. Acceleration was good in all three. 
All three were fun. I mean, I, I, I really like to ride quality. One of the things I was concerned about, because I have a sort of sporty car with the Subaru WRX, it's very rough over every bump that you go over. It handles great, but it's just, it's not a great car for going over bumps. This car seems to find the great compromise between the two. I thought it handled corners very well. And going over bumps and even speed bumps, as you'll see in the video, went very well. Like it was, it was very nice. And I'm excited to see how it handles the mountains tomorrow as well. So that's going to be fun. Yeah. Someone asked a question, what was the most surprising thing about this car? And definitely for me, it was the smoothness of the ride. And I think cushioned was the word that came to mind first. It just feels cushioned. It doesn't feel bouncy like my car. And I was expecting it to feel harsh like your car, but it wasn't. It just cruised over things. It felt like a cruise. It was really pleasant. And the whole driving experience, the whole cabin sort of thing is really enjoyable. Much, much more so, uh, to be totally honest, than the Model Y. And I think it might be the steering wheel size specifically, but it just... It's a comfortable interior. It's quiet. Very comfortable. Um, steering wheel, definitely. It feels like a regular, I mean, like a luxury high-end steering wheel versus the Model Y. To me, it seems like a toy steering wheel. And no offense if you love the Model Y. Yeah, just, I think, perhaps a personal preference thing that it seemed small and this felt comfortable which is very natural normal. the pedals are not natural at all for me but everything above the legs is yeah. very natural and, it, and again you know all the other reviews to talk about how solid the interior feels it felt very nice it, it's still hard to get used to how quiet it is it was almost like eerily quiet when we turned off all the sound and just drove especially at stoplights so very surprising how quiet it is and very pleasing how quiet it is I'll, I'll take some measurements tomorrow and compare it to the measurements i took in my wrx and we can take a look at that i think it's going to be a drastic difference between the two and something aesthetically that i didn't think would appeal to me so much is that the volume dial and the shifter dial are the same and they're they're close together. So like the way that you engage things and the aesthetics are similar and it's very cohesive. So like to switch into drive, park, neutral, it's identical to the volume. Pretty and close, yeah. Yeah, and I just, I think that that's both a very natural experience and they really incorporated that well. Yeah, I was surprised. Um, the dial on the screen, it looks pretty cool and it has a great feel to it. And a lot of people have been saying like, you know, why, you know, if you're the driver, you have the controls on the steering wheel, would you ever use that? And I found myself reaching for it several times. Um, one time in particular, we were getting ready to pull into the garage and just by default, like I always turn to the stereo down when I get home. And as you're, you know, making that turn, it's like, yeah, you can, you can hit the, the volume control on the steering wheel, but you're, you're turning it. So you really can't. So it was really nice. I just, reached over without even thinking and it was like right there within perfect reach i thought it was great so that was that was something surprising that's very minor another little detail was the i've seen uh only a couple of photos but they show that the puddle lights on the maki -E are a mustang and we caught that a couple of times and it, it's it's just pleasing when you see it. it just makes you smile when you see it so and we have a, a video that i can post of how that looked uh, when we saw it and caught that. Uh, our dog just walked right over and I just so rude. rude. <laughs> <laughs> but to hop quickly back to the volume thing, I also used it a couple times. Mm -hmm. Like I had the music on blasting and then I wanted to say something to you. So I just went, oh, by the way, blah, 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 blah. And then pop it back up blasting. I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then when you answered me back, I turned it all the way up. <laughs> Another thing that I want to explore tomorrow that I dipped into a little bit today was the Copilot 360 stuff with the adaptive intelligent cruise control. I'm not sure the exact terms, but um, I did get to try that a little bit today and was very, very, very impressed on like small city streets and stuff like that. As long as there was lane markings, I was able to activate it and turn it on and it handled it no problem. Uh, accelerated, decelerated, you know, perfectly. I was very pleased with that. One of the things I did have to learn, it was very easy because the, the button matches the setting that you need to change and that's the distance between you and the car in front of you driving around denver if you leave like the three or four line gap everybody's going to cut you off so I, I decreased that to like a one line gap and it followed closer so and it was within comfort i was still monitoring very closely hands on steering wheel foot near the brake because i was you know new to it but i thought it performed great and then 
uh, used it on I-25 for a little bit. And one of the best things like I that I was surprised about was uh, when you have it on to change lanes, you hit the blinker, you change lanes. And as you're getting into the lane, it basically recognizes now you're in the next lane and it'll reactivate for you. The little bubble icon uh, around your car comes back on and you, you know you're back engaged in the intelligent cruise control. So that was really cool and very, very smooth. Like it, it didn't feel like uh, the one time I drove the Model Y and did anything like that when I needed to break out of the autopilot it was like I, I really had to force it to get out of autopilot. It wasn't like, you know, huge, but it was still, it was like you had to force to get out of autopilot. This is very smooth and I liked it a lot and something else that we'll try some more tomorrow and hopefully we'll make a video on it so that you can see exactly what I was talking about. And I think you should film that whole thing because I found it really informative. Uh, I don't know if you were doing this intentionally, but he kept saying like, it's doing it now, it's doing it. And he kept telling me because to me, it looked like he was driving, like his hands were on the wheel he was staring straight ahead but he's like i'm not doing anything i'm not doing yeah. anything so that's kind of cool to see so i think you should film it tomorrow yeah i didn't like i didn't and i don't really care to test like how long i can have my hands off it felt very comfortable to just rest my hands on and you could feel it making the adjustments and that's you know how i plan on using it and how it should be used and i would have had no idea that you weren't the yeah. one driving if you hadn't yeah. told me <laughs> there's a couple of times where like we went for like five or ten minutes and like it's been driving um I, i've even just been holding on for five ten minutes and yeah because i think you said like i haven't driven since we got on the highway and it yeah. was like a good few miles yeah 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 so it was really cool and um you know again we'll, we'll dive into that a little bit more tomorrow and i will say you're more excited and comfortable with the co-pilot and the one pedal driving and I'm very uncomfortable with it. I'm not even going to think about co-pilot until I'm comfortable with the driving. It's not something that's coming naturally to me and I think that's okay. It's okay. So I don't know, maybe there are other people out there that this isn't coming naturally to. So I just want to kind of voice that so you don't give up. <laughs> I'm yeah. not going to give up. Uh, I think it might take me uh, longer, yeah. a lot longer than you, but no it's worries. okay. Hmm? No worries. Yeah. The final thing before we go, because we got to get to sleep, because tomorrow morning, like I said a few times, we're going to the mountains and driving. But um, the biggest negative area that we ran into was getting used to the sync software. We ran into some issues. And uh, one issue right now, and it's a Google issue, Android Auto it isn't working with sync. And it's, a, it's an Android issue. Um, the next version of Android Auto should fix that. But we both have Android phones. So that was an inconvenience for us, not being able to use use Android Auto that we're familiar with. The car was dropped off with a iPhone for us to use as a uh, phone as a key, as well as connecting and using CarPlay. We're not iPhone users. So that was like, you know, we really didn't dive into how to use that that much. It did seem to work flawlessly. Um, we just sort of had to explore a little bit more with that. The sync software, we tried some of the voice commands and uh, maybe we're just used to using Google as well there, but it didn't recognize some very easy navigate commands. So again, something that we were disappointed with and have to explore a little bit more we'll see tomorrow um hopefully it's just uh maybe it i don't know who knows i don't know and i did plug my phone in to charge and i didn't think that i activated android auto but because it plugged in i think it did by default and then i experienced that boot cycling where my phone just kept rebooting and rebooting and i i know some people have mentioned experiencing that so that was unfortunate i will say there is no way that you weren't being clear you were very very clear <laughs> Navigate to Evergreen. No results found. I think at least four or five times it didn't come yeah. up with anything. It said error or... Yeah, so it's something I got to figure out. Like, what? why isn't that clear? And hopefully if Google gets their act together and Android Auto works, we won't have to worry about it because that's what I'd prefer anyways. The other stuff worked pretty, you know, pretty well. Uh, changing drive modes. Didn't notice that the screen was, you know, very laggy. There was a couple of times when I was like trying to scroll quickly and throw it off a little bit. And I was, I, I caught it lagging. But for the most part, it, it seemed pretty responsive. We use the navigation system to, you know, bring up a map and that seemed fine. Again, you know, we're just used to 
uh, Google Maps. So it was a little bit different, but overall pretty good. And one of the things that we did give a try, somebody asked if you can play MP3 files off of a USB flash drive. We confirmed that works. That was pretty cool. And I guess we could say like uh, we did a uh, small test with the audio system. Seemed pretty darn loud and pretty good to us. And we'll, we'll yeah. get a clip of that. We need to find some non-copyrighted music that we can show so that you can uh, listen and, and see what you think. But we can't use copyrighted music on YouTube, even if it's already on YouTube, whatever. And so we did a lot of testing today and it definitely just how the drive felt, how cushioned it was and, and how it felt going over bumps and things was important to me, but also the storage and whether we can fit my trike in is very important to me. So that's something we're gonna do first thing in the morning. We're gonna put my trike in, we're gonna put a bunch of other things, the dog, people, Clowns, whatever. Clowns. However many clowns you get in the car. Are you scared of clowns? <laughs> Let us know down below. <laughs> so I think that's it for tonight. We have rambled on. It was a long but fun day for considering it was only a half day, but it, it was yeah. a lot of fun. One final note is the reaction of people. It's been great seeing. Uh, I mean, they were dropping the car off for us to evaluate, and we didn't even finished that process and somebody was yelling is that a mustang um and then when we got home tonight our neighbor was like oh my gosh that car is beautiful i didn't even know they made mustangs like that saw several people when we were in rhino like just staring us down and we were waiting for them to cross the road and they just were like awestruck by the car i believe um and saw one camaro uh he was sort of flying down the road and was going to pass us and then when he noticed that we were there he like slammed on the brakes and just literally like went back and forth. I think he might've been taking photos, but. Yeah, you kind of have to pay extra attention to the people around you because you might expect pedestrians to keep crossing the street, but they sort of do that look back and slow down thing when you're trying to go straight or turn or whatever. So <laughs> be aware. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty car. And, uh, you know, we've been putting photos up during the video that you could see that. So <laughs> anyways, thanks for joining us for this video. We're, this is day one video. We'll, have a, a day two video with a summary as well as short videos highlighting some of the things that we love and maybe some of the things we don't love about the Mach-E. So thanks for tuning in. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Give this a like so that we know that you watched the whole thing. And I think that's it. You have anything? Look at our pretty shirts. <laughs> are you gonna do it or are you gonna make me look stupid? No, I'm gonna do it. You're gonna do it. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. And remember, have a whisper day. I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs>